This incredible POV footage is helping us learn more about how climate change is affecting polar bears. Polar bears have become the face of climate change. And for good reason. The world's largest land carnivores need the Arctic's vast ice sheet to survive. And polar bears are reliant on the sea ice as their essential platform to catch seals, which is their primary diet. Anthony and his colleague Dr. Karin Road have been researching polar bears in Canada's Hudson Bay to find out if the iconic animals inhabiting that particular area can survive the rapid changes of their environment. The climate is warming at a faster rate in, in the Arctic relative to the rest of the planet, about two to four times faster. The warming temperatures mean that iceless summers are getting longer and bears need to spend more time on land. In this area where we did our, our research in western Hudson Bay, polar bears are on land for about three weeks longer than they had been um, as recently as the 1980s. So they're presently on land for about 130 days. That's a little over four months, an incredibly long time for a species that has evolved to rely on ice for its survival. So much so that polar bears are actually considered marine mammals. They've evolved this, this strategy where they'll essentially wait by a seal's breathing hole. So the seals swim around in the water. They uh, scratch out these holes in the ice that they use to breathe. They're mammals, so they breathe air like we do. And the polar bears will sit by these breathing holes. They can sit there for hours at a time. And when a seal finally comes up to get a breath of air, the polar bear will try to pounce on them and catch them and, and eat them. And the seals provide a lot of energy. They're rich in blubber and uh, they can sustain a polar bear for about seven to 10 days. So far, scientists thought that bears may be finding ways to adapt to spending longer time on land. To find out if this is true, in one of their studies, Anthony and his colleagues attached collar video cameras to 10 bears that they monitored closely. We used these collars from a, a collar company called Vectronic. It's basically pretty similar to the traditional type of satellite um, collar that we've used on polar bears in the past, but it has um, the canisters extended down slightly a couple of inches, and it has a camera that looks out underneath the bear's chin. And it kind of gives us a, a bear's eye view of of what the, the bears are doing so we could fully understand the consequences of the bears' diet and their activity for how much weight they were actually losing to understand whether there was actual any actual benefit of these foods on land. But they didn't find what they were hoping for. What we found was pretty surprising for us. We really found that bears on land weren't using one single strategy, that some bears were resting most of the time. We had a couple adult males that were resting more than 95% of the time and essentially fasting for the, the three week long period that we monitored them. A lot of the bears, about 70% of the bears were much more active. They were moving around the, the landscape, presumably looking for, for food to eat. Um, a lot of them were feeding on berries and vegetation. Some of them were finding bird carcasses and eating those. Um, we had two bears that went for um, really long swims in the, the bay, um, one of which was a subadult female that found a beluga whale carcass in the bay, and she actually fed fairly minimally from that and mostly used it as a buoy to rest upon. Another bear, an adult female, found a seal carcass in the bay, and she tried to swim that back to shore. And the fact that both of those bears fed pretty min minimally while they were swimming highlighted to us that these bears can't really swim and eat at the same time. And the adult female that found a seal, she tried to swim it back to shore and spent most of the nights swimming with it back to shore before eventually dropping it. Regardless of whether the bears were resting and conserving their energy or whether they were much more active and feeding on foods on land, they are all losing body weight at similar rates, about one kilogram per day. At this rate, Polar bears in the Hudson Bay could be losing a total of 130 kilograms, or over 185 pounds, for the 130 days that they're currently forced to spend on land. And the modeling work that's been done suggests that they're likely to be on land for longer periods of time in the future, increasing about 10 days per, per decade. And some of the work that's been done is 
suggested that we're likely to see um, pretty severe starvation issues once bears get to about 100 days, 180 days on, on land. This footage is a beautiful reminder of the uniqueness of these animals we share a planet with. But it's also undisputable proof that we're destroying their habitat to the point of no return. Now, our study really highlights that terrestrial foods on land are inadequate to support polar bears, to sustain them for longer periods in the future. It really confirms the analyses that have been done in the past that um, polar bears are at risk of declines in Arctic sea ice, that the greatest threat to polar bears is climate warming. Nothing about this is good news, but we know exactly what to do in order to limit the damage. It's really a matter of mitigating fossil fuel emissions to try to regulate climate change, to try to be able to reduce the degree of, of sea ice declines that's forecasted in the future.